Boom. What up, what up, what up? Working for you, LLC. What up, swag and live? What up, everybody? Hey, hey. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Happy Friday to you. How are you today? I'm good. It's Thursday. Oh, I try to make it Thursday. Yes. See, I don't know what day it is. I just said that. I don't even know what day it is. <laughs> Happy Thursday. I want to make sure you know what day it no, is. No, that's what it is. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, you know, we got to. I was like, wait a minute. Why don't we just go on the, on the business page with you? On the business, get some business in. So you're working some deals, huh? Yeah, I'm trying to. Um, nice to meet you. Fine, I've been watching you for nice. a while, and um, so it's cool because I'm like, uh, I watch a lot of other people follow a lot of other people, but since you're local, it makes them like, oh my gosh, she's here. And, you know, we're both here in St. Louis, so that that um, that works out great. So oh, you're in St. Louis. Oh man, why you ain't hear me? Yeah, I mean, I'm right I ain't here. Know St. Louis. You, you can help me get some of these deals off this board right here. You know, somebody yeah. one of them house. Like Listen, I tell you, I'll be watching you. I say, and, and the fact that you've only been doing it for a little over a year, I'm like, oh, yeah, see, Chris is the most, Chris can do it. We, but I'm like, babe, we can do this. We can, <laughs> Chris is holding it. I be hand. telling people. That, that's all you need to see that it's possible. You say, man, wait a minute. They just got in how long ago? And I'm yeah. up here studying hard and working hard and breaking my back and all that. Yeah. So what is it that you're working on here? So um, I have two big things. Well, I have one. Okay, let me start over. The the, the, the what what made me reach out to you was because um, I was communicating with the seller, and um, I first by driving for dollars down in the city he had a property, and he wanted to sell, but he's um, talking to his niece who also wants the property because she would like for it to stay within the family. But, and it's a two-family flat, um, like, not far from the Fox. You know, they're, they're fixing that area up. So, I think, you know, potentially it's going to be, and that, on, their, on their street, that, that has to be, like, the worst property so far. They've been renovating that street. So, I'm like, okay, good. But um, he said he's not ready yet. He still want to, you know, talk with his niece. So, I have a good rapport with him. But he said, but I also have a different property, Um on uh off of Jenny Station Road, and um, so we went looked at the property, but the issue is I, I left a me I was the one who left a message when you had a live with Brian. Is he oh he still owes a mortgage out on it. He he doesn't live there. His sister used to live there, but she passed away. His name is on the on the property and everything though, but he owes about forty seven. He said on it. So you know I'm looking. It's a three bedroom. No, it's two bedrooms technically, but the upstairs is is like a loft, but it's a whole mm -hmm. other living space. Um, and the homes over there aren't going for very much, based on like my research. And I'm like, if you owe forty seven, I mean, I, I saw another house that sold for like fifty, and that was with the same comparables, and that was the the most expensive. Everything else was like twenty thousand, eighteen. You know, it was very, very. Yeah, low. around a twenty thousand dollar mark. What is it in the Jennings area, or is it down on the other end, like Pine Line? It's Pine Line. Um, what is this county? I think. I don't know. And another issue yeah. I'm having too, because I'm originally from Miami, Florida. So I've been here. Uh, this is my ninth year. So I'm just trying to, you know, know what what is the best areas like i know miami like the back of my hand but i don't know okay how good is jennings is that a is it a high risk is it low <laughs> and my husband is in education so we go by the school system he got you know the school districts he's like mm, baby i don't know you know as far, especially because there's no equity in the you know in the home um, do you know what his uh, mortgage payments are and stuff like that or he said around, he's an older gentleman, he said it's a, it used to be around in the 300s, but he's behind on taxes, which is more pressing to him than even the mortgage. So he said now it's around five. So he got a mortgage so old that they don't even have the taxes included in escrow in the, in the payment. Yes. Because I, I, I thought his sister had passed away recently, but his nephew was saying that it's been about 10 years, and the property has been vacant for about four or five years. Vacant for four years. Do you, is it uh, habitable? Can somebody move in it? Is it like handy messed up, or is it like full-blown renovation? It's going to be a full, I think it'll be a full-blown renovation because I smell water in the basement. 
Is he current on the payments? I don't believe so. Yeah, because I would I would ask him that one, and if he is, I'd be trying to go do a short sale with that thing. Because I mean, it's it's all more than what it's worth, and any repairs, I mean, it's really no way to other way to do that property a short sale to make it make sure. sense. And that's if that's right, and that's only if he's current on the payment. No, if he's behind and he has a hardship, does he have a hardship? I know you said he's older, he's not working or anything, right? No, in the last two years, I think he said or so, he ha he's had um, a stroke. He's had some health some health issues going on. So yep. he really you get all that document. Yeah, you get all that documentation to show. Yep, he's had a stroke. He's had medical problems. His uh, you know, they're gonna ask for bank statements, tax returns, W two, show he don't make any money or don't make enough to make this payment. And show his whole life, and then they probably would approve his uh, short sale, depending on, you know, if your package is sent in properly. Right. Sure. So, yeah, it's possible. You know, I mean, it just depends on what he wants. What does he really want? Does he just want to be relieved of this debt? Yeah. Or is he like, I need money? What is it that he needs? What does he want? He said he he just wants to get get it out, you know, be done with it. He's like, because that's what I asked him, too. I asked, you know, what are you looking, what are you guys going to do with it? He said, well, I'm hoping to give it to you. And then I'm like, give it to you, damn. Then I'm like, oh, really? <laughs> he said, oh, hey, I'm don't play with me. Up. I'll lock it up and start marketing that mud. Don't play with me. I'm, I'm cold right now. I'll lock up and start marketing. The people tell me if it's good. I don't know if it's good. The fucking place will tell <laughs> Yeah. I mean, you know, so we're, my husband, we haven't, I haven't closed a deal yet. So I'm like, I don't know what I should do, you know, and this is. Do well, you know what the ARV is of that property? I mean, it sounds like it's, um, Less than that forty-seven thousand. I don't. Well, it, what I I mean that's another thing too. Like, am I calculating it correctly? I mean, I, and I, and I, I say that because normally you you want to get uh, like five at least five different properties similar, right? You know well, you can get three. I mean, three would be oh. nice. The more the merrier. But you know, if you can get one, two, or even three or more, that's even better. But okay. generally, I don't think they even go that much in that area. I mean, depending on what part of Jenny Station Road is in. If it's really in the Pine Line area, I don't, I don't think it's going to bring that money. But you know, I don't know because I don't have the address and the information. But I will. You know, I would say that's where you always want to start with these deals. Find out, you know, what's the ARV or after repair value. What are the houses selling for when they're all fixed up? Which there's probably not a lot of fixed up yeah. properties right in that area to even go off of. Right. If that doesn't work, just say, well, what what is what's the most these houses are selling for on this area? You know, are they, are, are people even getting in that range? Are they sticking around a thirty five to thirty thousand mark? If they start you start looking like forty seven. Sound like a short sale. You know, that's all that's all it sounds like to me, just hearing what you told me so far. Mm -hmm. But I don't have enough information to really make that determination. Okay. So, I mean, that's the biggest thing. What does he really want? I mean, if he's just saying, I just need to get rid of it, yeah. I'll be trying to sit. If he's willing to go through the process of, you know, submitting all his paperwork to try to get get a short sale approved from his lender, do you know if it, what kind of what bank is with and stuff like that or not really? No, he didn't know. He said, um, that was another thing, too, I need to call him. He told me um, to give him, he didn't know, he couldn't remember who, which bank had the mortgage. See, these kind of people right here, I mean, especially if you built a report with him, you need to go over there. And, and meet up with him and have him sign an authorization to release information. Have him sign one of these documents right here, and it'll actually, you know, give you permission to call the bank and find out. Because when he starts saying, I don't know, and I don't know, you, you're going to be beating your head. You need to get authorization so you can talk to the bank, or it ain't going to never get done. I can tell you that right now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you already, you know, up a creek without a paddle when they start saying, oh, I don't really remember. Oh, man, get your statement. We gonna have you fill out this uh, paper right here. I'm gonna send this over to them, and I'm I'm gonna call them and see what's going on. Because other than that, the thing could be foreclosed already. He wouldn't even know. Like, oh, I don't know. Oh yeah. Bank could have took it. Anything could have happened. We don't know. I mean, I could probably look it up online and see what I could find out. But still, you know, mm -hmm. just knowing, you know, just general, like, oh, I don't know. When people start saying that, I'm like, oh yeah, we need you to fill out right here, buddy. Yeah. Do you have one of those documents? No. You can get one out of the Woke Real Estate Investors Group. It's in the file section in the uh, Facebook group there. Okay. You're a member of the Woke Real Estate Investors Group, right? Yep. Yep. So just look in that file section that's in there, the okay. authorization to release. Okay. Okay. So that was like the biggest thing. And then, okay, so so what do you do? Like, So this other property that we were looking at, and that's how we first connected, it's a two-family. It's also been vacant for, he said, about four or five years. The roof... Is collapsed on one on one side of the property, and like you, um, this even up in this 
in the foundation, like not just the roof, but like a side of the house. You know what I mean? And um, what part of town is it? You say in the city? It's in the city. It's like like what North City? Like what? Like what area? Um, it's off of uh, Cook Avenue. It's like not far away from uh, the Fox and Grand Center and all that. Oh, okay. Grand Cook Thirty Six on the block. Cook. Okay. So yeah. Okay. Um. I mean, they only go for so much over there, but, you know, it's an up-and-coming area. Depends on what does he want. You know, it all starts, what do you want, Mr. Seller? Mr. Seller, what do you see? This, how do you see this playing out? What would be the best-case scenario for you? See, I ask those open questions so I can get feedback to see how they feel about things, what they think about things. Because without knowing what they want to do, I know they want to, you know, let his niece or whoever, daughter or whoever you said, family member, take over the property or whatever. If they ain't did nothing in so long, you know. So then, I mean, so for me – even with okay, even with the first property, like, what do I offer them? I guess I mean. Well, that's what I'm saying. You got to start off about getting uh, your whole mission right now is gather information. I don't even think about no offer yet. Okay. I need to know all the facts. What do you want for the thing? What kind of uh, renovations does this property need? About how much in repairs? It might be a hundred thousand in repairs, and we can't do nothing with it. Yeah. Or it might be fifty thousand, or you know, we know it's something because it's been vacant for a while. Yeah. I would estimate fifty thousand. I ain't even seen the building. Right. You know what I mean? I ain't gotta see it. I know it's some high. Yeah, yeah it's high. Because <laughs> I know it's the area. It's loaded. You gotta clear it out anyway. It's a gang of stuff in there. And when we went, um, somebody people in the neighborhood had already been in there. They kicked the door in. Um, so he, he, you know, they rigged that back up to close it and, you know, whatever. So, but he wasn't even aware of that. It had been so long since they had been over there. Yeah, he needs your help. So, you know, that's the whole thing. You have to identify the pain point, completely identify the pain point, then figure out a solution to solve that pain. So right now, don't worry about trying to solve it. Just figure out how to identify what is your real pain? How can I help you the most? What can I do to make your day a better day? You know, we whatever property they got. How can I help you today, Mr. Seller? What can I do to make your your life better? Okay, that's our position. And then once we get there, all the facts. That's when we come back and start figuring out what can we offer, what can we do this, or can we do some creative? Can we do you know? Because then, because we got the facts now, but without the fact, we can't really just go out and start making offers. Unless you just want to say, oh, I give you five grand for it. I ain't got to see it. I offer five grand right now. I ain't seen the building. I just know it'd be it's worth more than that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, I mean, we go that low. I know I can do something with it right off the rip. Right. But, you know, we need to identify what do you want to get for it or, you know, do you need something for it? Mm -hmm. Or you can get the money for this to pay for the other property or whatever. You know, you, you might have to get a little creative. But it's it's real good to become a good question asker. That's how I train to say always ask good questions, open questions, where they can just tell you exactly how they feel about everything. And they'll, they'll tell you how to close them right there. Okay. Um, okay, so another, what do you recommend? So my life is pretty, pretty busy, like most people, but I'm a mom. I homeschool my kids. So it's not like I have an hour, like when they're in school, they're, for the most part, always with me. Mm -hmm. So the biggest challenge that I'm having with doing the business is finding the time to be able to make the phone calls and to be able, you know, to, did I mean, um, to be able to do it. So I, you know, we, I got into it. I start. We started on this path like last about last summer, but oh wow! Really, I haven't been able to be as consistent as I know I need to be because I know it's a numbers game. You know what I mean? To be able to. So is he helping you too, or is it just you mostly running most of the business stuff? Me mostly. My husband uh, tries to get involved, but he's he's already stretched out with you know his nine to five. Well, his his job. You know what I mean? He's involved with right, the city right. a lot. He's a musician. So you're saying it's difficult for you as far as the... Hold on one second. I'm sorry. Thanks for calling. I ain't calling nobody. I already did it. All right. Sorry about that. It's I'm expecting a call from these people to call back, and I ain't know if that was them. That was an 888 number. Who knows who that was? Right. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, the biggest thing is... Um, I mean, are you looking to cold call? Is that what you mean when you say calls, or is it more so just getting on the phone with them? Period. Period. I've been I've been doing uh, cold calls. Like we do a lot of driving for dollars. We have the deal machine app, so we uh, we did the batch skip tracing to get the numbers. So I've been doing uh, for the most part just going through the list. You know, just calling, calling, or doing a cold calling. But um, so I'm not sure. And then also my my the time to be able to do it is the problem that I'm having. Um, what about text messages? You do that too, or? 
I haven't been able to. I haven't. I've done a couple text messages, but not really. So do I yeah, do you text can... everybody individually? No, no, no. There's software you can use. I mean, you can do it like that, but there's software you can use that can just upload the spreadsheet and actually put it straight in there. All of the resources that I use for everything in the business is on my site at wokerealestate.com. It's mm -hmm. a whole page full of all the resources I use for texting, for whatever it is, any type of marketing. And um, so it's a whole list of resources there. But um, you can text people is one way. I mean, that'll cost you a little bit. Two, depending on if you have a budget for something, you can have somebody else do because I, I, I do very, very light cold calling, if not any. I have two virtual assistants that I trained up in the Philippines to do all my calls. And we got like four leads came in today. I'm like, where are all these leads? Came? We got a lot of leads came in this week for some reason. We're up to like 10 leads this week already, and it's Thursday. So I don't know. You know, I don't know if any of them going to be working. I can tell one of them ain't nothing. But, you know, the way the system, you know, you set up a good system and, uh, you know, try to work it that way. Do you have a budget for something like that or not really? Um, Not really, but, I mean... You know, we'll make it do it. I, well, we will. We'll make a budget for it because, you know what I mean? Like, me being on the phone to do that has been a, a challenge. So I need to be able to have somebody to do it. So my thing is I have them do all the cold calling, the grunt work, getting hung up on, getting cussed out, all that stuff. <laughs> people that do say, yeah, I do want to sell, those are the people I talk to. Okay. I do the closing. So I do the follow-up closing calls. So when I get on the phone with them, I already got all the information, how much they owe, how much they want, condition of the property, why they selling. All that stuff's already done before I even get on the phone with them. Okay. So that's kind of how mine is set up. Um, so that makes it a little bit easier. And I can't even get, I can't keep up with the follow-up sometimes. That's bad, ain't it? <laughs> <laughs> so it'd be like, man, too much stuff. So that's so, I mean, that's one. Yeah, you could do that if you had a budget for it. I mean, you probably, I mean, even if it's like $100 a week, I mean, I don't know if that's too much. I mean, but it probably would cost you at least that much. $100 you know, a week. About 100 bucks a week. Depending on if you could have them come out three days a week or, you know, some schedule. You can just already have it predetermined that, hey, this is what we're trying to do, and uh, this is what, you know, what we can do. You know, but you have to set it up to where they know what they're doing and stuff, too, though. That's the only thing when you start getting virtual assistants. You have to take the time to train them. Show them exactly what you want them to do. As long as they have good English and things like that and they're trainable, usually you can make something work out with them. Okay. Okay, so you suggesting try looking into software for text messaging. Um, if the budget allows, get a, a VA. Just to handle the, the hard part. I'm talking about getting that whole list shrink down to people who say, yeah, I want to sell. Well, what do you want to give me from a house? What's this? Well, we, you know, and the virtual system, that well, we'll let you know about that. Let me gather a little bit of information first. They get all the information. All right, I'll have my manager call you back in the next 24 to 48 hours, and they'll present you with an offer, something to that effect. Okay. And so they basically put all their information in the system, and then I'll call the people back. Okay. So like uh like this guy here, I'll show you on my thing real quick. So like this, a lead will come in. Let me see here. Flip my camera. A lead will come in, show you how I came. So I got my podium. This is podium. That's free. Don't cost anything. Okay. You can set that up too to help you get organized. Podio.com. So I got all these different ways, you know, their status, mm -hmm. what phone number to use, the person name, uh, you know, if the house is vacant. You see all this. Did the VA did all of this. I ain't do none of this. Everything you see, all right, they, they ask these questions that you see on the left, mm -hmm. and they fill in the answer on the right, basically. Four bedroom, one and a half bath, needs re-carpeting, he spent money on the kitchen, you know, tell you the updates they made, how old is the roof, all this stuff. All the basic questions that I get them to ask right off the very first initial call mm -hmm. is all loaded up in here. Why are they selling? You know, it's an inherited property. Oh, we're moving. Moving is a, a scam. I don't even like this when I see that. Everybody moving because you're selling a dang old house. We know that. So whatever. <laughs> <laughs> they can't afford it and got divorced, as you see here. See, see, I got all this information at my fingertips. I see how much he owe. He owe $94,000 a lot. It's $1,000 a month. It covers PITI, principal interest taxes and insurance. Uh, he wants to get one forty four, but as you see, he only owe 94 So you see he got a little bit of equity, supposedly, if the numbers make sense, you know. So you see how it's got all this on a system to where it comes in to me, and all I have to do is go in, follow up with a person, and see what I can do to make a deal out of some, out of the information that's been gathered. But the facts have been gathered. And I'm going to reiterate and maybe even ask some of them questions again to try to get their feel. Because, you know, our main thing on a first call is to do really two things. One, gauge motivation. 
why are you really selling? Not just right out the gate, like, why are you selling? But, you know, talk to me. Yeah, tell me about your house. Tell me about this. Oh, wow, how long you live here? Be a person. No, it sounds like a pretty good house. What made you decide to want to sell it? I don't ever start talking about why you want to sell it in the first 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. In the first 10 questions, as a matter of fact, it ain't even on my line. I want them talking about that house because that sounds regular. They know you want to buy it. I want to know about your house. Then I go into talking about, yeah, well, um, you know, about their mortgage or how much they own on it and all that type of stuff. Is it current, you know? Or tenants in situation? Are there tenants in the property? Are they current? Do they want to stay? Do they know you're selling the property? All this stuff. You know, I ask about 50 questions. My motto is 50 questions. If you ain't asked 50 questions, you ain't asked enough. So I know so much information. So like that question you asked me earlier, what do I offer them? I'm going to have all the offers I'm going to know because I've asked them so much stuff. They telling me to offer about the questions I ask. Right. Basically, if it makes sense. Now, if they ask them something stupid, oh, I want 140. Man, the house is worth... 140 in perfect condition and you need 30,000 in work. That ain't happening. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. as we know. So, you know, everybody can dream, but what they're asking is just what they're asking. But if the numbers work out, we try to make a deal with it. Does that, all that make sense? Yes. I just bombarded you with all that stuff, though. Yeah. He's like, that ain't never a lot. Well, so this replay will be there for a minute. <laughs> how, do you, um, you, you train your, you, did you give the questions for the VAs to ask? You give them the yeah, question. so all of that comes in part of my uh, wholesale package is on my site. It's a wholesale package that has everything, contracts, all the questions, follow-up questions, everything. All I've got to do is work it. It's a system already ready to go. It's right on wokerealestate.com. It has everything that you would need to know what to ask. Or you can just watch all my videos. It's the same stuff I just went over, basically. <laughs> and, then, you know, some little stuff to try to make it better. Yeah. You know, you can tweak it because, you know, how people say, why are you selling? I never say, why are you selling? Like yeah. I say, I change it up. Or not, how much you owe on that house? Say, so, well, you know, since we'll be buying this house for cash, is there a mortgage we'll be paying off as well? Less offensive. You see what I'm saying? When you start saying your words and asking questions in a way that's not so, ah, give me the that, ah, you know, it don't sound like nothing. It's not like we're just talking. Yeah. We're just having a conversation. We're regular people, you know, and most people are, you know, they're reasonable. If they're reasonable, you work with them. If they're not reasonable, whack them. Gotcha. So, okay. With the authorization form, that once the if the seller decides to sign that, that will give me the opportunity to be able to call the mortgage company to be able to see who the mortgage company is, how much they tax it, everything. I'll be actually be able to find out everything about the property, right? Everything, everything that has to do with that bank or that lender, and is it, does he only have one lender or is it two mortgages? Some people have two, like this one I just got the other day. Got two mortgages, and I found out the second mortgage was on a um, what do you call it? Um, a line of credit. I said, oh, wait a minute. Let me call and make sure because I don't want to be like paying on something. They go back and borrow the money. Y'all, I said, uh, -uh. <laughs> but they said it's closed out. I contacted the bank myself to verify this stuff. You see, because they're going to say what they're going to say, but you always want to trust but verify. Always verify all of this stuff, regardless of what come out of their mouth, because it's your job to make sure that you know what you're getting into with these deals. Okay. Lord. Okay. Another question is which, which area? Like if, okay, so if we wanted, if we wanted to purchase a, an investment property, which area do you think is the best area to do that to make a you know to invest in? As far as what a standard buying and hold like traditional rental? Yes. Well, first of all, I would never do a traditional rental. I live in the world of lease options because I don't do maintenance, repairs, property management, and none of that crazy stuff. I just collect checks like Bank of America. See, I got whole folders here full of papers ready to go. Yeah. <laughs> I don't do none of that stuff. But, you know, just that's a disclaimer. So I might be biased against just traditional rentals. But uh, wherever somebody, wherever people are willing to pay, you know, because I got houses all over St. Louis, some up in North County, some in South County, some in South City. If somebody want to live there, I'm more than willing to put them in there. They got a down payment and a job. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and you do you prefer so, the lease, lease to own options? Yeah, I do lease. A lease is one document, a standard residential lease agreement. Then an option is a second agreement where they actually pay for that option to say, yeah, in the event within this time frame, I decide to buy this house. I have the option to buy this house lease. for this set amount of money. But all those documents, like I said, are at WokeRealEstate.com. It's a full thing. You can look at it without buying it or anything. You can just see what documents come with each uh, package and stuff. Okay. And so what's the difference between a lease option or, or I guess is that the same lease option or lease to rent to own? Is that the same thing? So a rent to own, a lease option, a lease purchase, all synonymous. Okay. 
but it sounds better. I'm not going to, and I'd rather tell a person, yeah, you're on our lease purchase program. Oh, lease purchase. Don't that just sound better? <laughs> then, oh, man, it's the lease to own. Yeah. Rent to own. Rent to own is more regular to speak normal. But if you want to make it sound flashy, it's a lease purchase program. Lease Go ahead and sign up for our program. Apply for one of our properties, or one of our homes. You know, we, we're we buying houses and selling homes. So you got to switch them words up. We're buying houses, right. houses, and selling homes. So you don't ever want to tell a seller, hey, little baby, <laughs> she's buying houses too. <laughs> Okay. She's gonna take over mama business. Say, I'm getting all the house, mom. Let me in the game. Right. My um my son, he was like, Mom, we're driving for dollars again, mom. I'm like, Yeah, you pay attention. You guys Yeah, make a fun for him. Say you find a house that got look funny. Yep. And uh so the other day I went out driving, what was that? A couple days ago, I just was in the neighborhood looking at a house and I said, Dang, some of these houses look weird. Let me just look roll a couple down these streets and see what I see. I found seventeen houses in thirty five minutes. Can you believe that? Yeah, I can. And here's a hack. You ready for a hack when you're driving for dollars? Trash. That's right. That trash, baby. Ooh. I went down, and it's, it makes it so much easier. If all them trash cans out on the curb, you be like, why yours ain't out on the curb, baby? Mm -hmm. Your house vacant. And every time I look it up, it's an absentee owner in a vacant house. Every time. <laughs> yep. Or 99.999% of the time. Yes. Trash, mill, yep. tall grass, all of that stuff. Oh, so you've been watching the video. See, so you've been studying, I see? I'm just, I'm like, wait, put me in the game, coach. Okay, put me. So, you know, I haven't had a deal, but I'm just trying to stay. I'm trying to continue to study, continue to learn, because I know that once I actually do one, then I'll learn that way hands on. But I just, every day I'm watching, you know, man, I'm watching it, watching the videos. And while I follow, you know, quite a few people follow Max, I follow Brian, I follow you, I follow this, I mean, probably everybody, you know. Is, you know, so, um, what do you feel like is your strong suit? What do you think you're good at? I like, to, I mean, I'm personable. I think talking to people, I'm really great at that. Um, but that's all I know for now because I haven't done anything else, you know. The, did you have a sales background or something before, or what were you doing before you got into real estate? Uh, I'm a stay at home mom. Now? And then before, I was uh, working as a dental assistant. So, you know, that's talking with people and making people feel comfortable and. All that. Oh man, you can kill this game. Yeah, all that jazz, and you know you can kill this game. This thing wide open. Have a science background, but um, I think then I already open this. And then, how much time do you dedicate to this business? I mean, do you do like a couple hours a day, or what do you do? No, I try. I do. I try to do Wednesday and Fridays are like the days I have the most time. So I try to do maybe four to five hours a week. Uh, Cause again, I have my I have four children, seven, six, two, and one, and they all, we all stay at home. I homeschool them all, so you know it, it's pretty busy. One, so mm -hmm. I try to try to get everybody to go. You know, the the babies to go to sleep at the same time, but that usually never happens. One go to sleep, the other one wake up. They tag team me, so well, I have little interruptions like that. So I have the older ones upstairs, but it's 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 my life is pretty busy, but. We got to do this business, you know. I feel like if we don't do it now, we won't. And I just, I know yeah. that we can, you know. I'm like, if I can make time to do play dates, I can make time. Okay, this is the time mommy has to work to do this, you know. Yeah, and one check change everything. One deal can change your whole life. Right. You be like, oh man, I should have been on this years ago. Yeah, and my um, my goal is to be able to um, supplement my husband's income, you know. At least, you know, what does he do? He's a uh, band director. He's at Cardinal, oh, okay. Yeah, he's at Cardinal Ritter, and he's also a local musician, so he's always around. Uh, I mean, he's everywhere. He's, he's always ground, down in Grand Center, so he's doing a lot of good stuff in the community as well. So his goal, he's like, once we learn the game and we master, he want to teach the students. Dang, put me in, coach. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Yeah, but yeah, as you see, it's wide open out here, you know, so just keep on getting more leads because all it takes is one person to say yes, like the deal that I'm going to be talking about uh, next Monday. This deal walked up to me at a quick trip gas station. Yeah, I saw you, you put that on your, on your uh, story. I'm like, wow. Yeah, $10,000. Walk up on you. That's crazy. Yeah. And I could have got more if I knew now what I knew. If I knew back then what I know now, I could have got more. Because they only owe like, I mean, what she owe like seventy thousand on it. We locked it up for like eighty. I could have got that thing lower. <laughs> right, exactly. I sold yeah. it at ninety. I'm like, oh man, I left money on the table, but whatever. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You can't squeeze all the lemon out that juice. <laughs> yeah. 
So I'm just did, you, did, to, did you have any other questions for me? No, do you have any other advice? Like what now that with all us the um experience that you have now versus when you first started, what's you know, what's something I should really zone in and focus on or get on them phones. You gotta find a way to get on them phones and start talking to people. I mean, you know, that it's no way of getting around it. When you get through with all that, this business still come through that phone. You got to get on that phone. And, you know, the way I do a lot of my deals, I lock up the deal over the phone. I send them a contract right now. I don't need to come see your house. But everybody don't teach it that way. Some people say, oh, go to the house, but you can't do all that. You're busy. I need to lock you up right now. When I come see you, I'm bringing a bar with me or I'm buying it or whatever. Something yeah. going on. Yeah. You know, that's just the way I roll, though, you know. But, I, I, yeah, I like that. Because and, and also for me, too, I don't want to waste time. I want to go out there. Because, I like, even when I when I went to the last property, I you know, I, have, I come with my kids. So when I go, I want to be serious. I want to know, you know what I mean? Like, I think that's a great strategy as well. I mean, if it if can be locked up before I even get there, then do that, you know? Yeah, ain't no reason not to. You already got equitable interest. You can start marketing that property and you're ready to roll, you know, and instead of, you know, let me go look at it, let me go. Because some people are already ready to go. Like that guy you're talking to, he's ready to go. Just numbers don't really make sense right now. Yeah. They're ready to go. Let's lock them up. What are we doing? You know what I mean? Right. We'll figure out if it's a deal or not because we're going to, I mean, we're we not saying just lock up deals like that. But generally, if the numbers even look close, like, hey, this looks like it could be something. It's pretty tight, but I don't know. You know, it's close. Let's lock it up and see, because the contract, you know, my contracts protect me. You know, they have those clauses out of it to say, you know, subject to partner's approval, subject to inspection, you know. And, you know, if you base your repair amounts off of what they told you, you know, they lied. They tell you, oh, they think it's about 40000 in repairs. You get there, it's 100000 in repairs. Your contract protected you. So it ain't like it's something wrong. People be scared to lock up a property. But, you know, whatever. I guess everybody do it different. Yeah, well, your I guess that's a part of the package too. Is that inside the the woke real estate? Uh, yeah, the contracts and stuff are all at wokerealestate dot com. Um, the only thing on the woke real estate group is the purchase. What is it? What is on there? I think it's some files and I think it's some group some files in there on the group thing. Let me see here. Yeah, if, I think uh, I have a the authorization contracts. to release information is in there. Uh, oh, and I got that JV agreement too. But you got a text. JV to three one nine nine six for the JV agreement. Okay, that, <laughs> to do I, deal with multiple text. people. I gotta use my husband's phone. I was like that never. I can never send. Those and that's people. another thing too. Start networking and work with other people. Like that's why I ask you, what are you good at? Because if you know you can bring value in one thing, you don't have to do all that other stuff. Like like me, I'm work. I'm done with the bringing in leads part. I'm just working deals. I ain't even thinking about no leads. Leads is old. We got leads. What are we gonna do with the leads now? You know that's right. the next step. Then you gotta still lock them up and still sell it. So you know acquisition and disposition. Gotcha. So instead of you know focusing on you know the hard brunt of it, which you do need to learn it, you know figure out you know how you can you know. Work with some other people, things like that, so where you can just do deals, you know, do the part that you're good at. Yeah. Maybe you can just work on selling deals where you're dealing with buyers only. You ain't dealing with sellers. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Work on a disposition side where you can get something flowing. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. you know there's two sides of the business, acquisition and disposition. Yeah. First you got to get it. Then you have to sell it. Okay. And that might be a better strategy for you. Focus on selling deals that's locked up. You know, work with other wholesalers or something that's in the area. You know, if you can, you know, if they really got a deal. Because most of the time, a deal should sell itself. Yeah. Okay. All right. I can't Good nugget for you. Anything else? You got any more questions, comments, concerns before <laughs> you and I get up out of here and do some more woke stuff? Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, what about, okay, so let me see text messages what about the ringless voicemail is that yeah all of that's on there too everything's at woke real estate.com every service i use every day okay I, that's what i said we get more leads in most times than i can process that'd be the problem because i got like seven of them in there right now so i'm finna go back and look at them and see you know what looked like the most motivated guy people who call bandit signs usually motivated one guy is down on the south side he called this morning and so he looks pretty motivated i rolled by his house he was walking out as i was rolling by i'm looking like dang you that motivated you knew i was on your street <laughs> <laughs> okay. i should have stopped right there but i'm like nah i'm gonna call him and see what's going on yeah. but he sounded motivated you know from what the note said okay all right so okay another i think i have another question driving for dollars especially because we have a low budget would be you suggest is the best way to you know get the leads and to call people or should I be going to the courts or getting any other pulling any list? 
Uh, you can pull this into that, but that's probably the most cost efficient way what you're doing now. And I, do you do you know what the hottest zip codes are in St. Louis? Um, uh, Florissant, I believe. <laughs> that face. <laughs> Put that in your notes. Find out what are the hottest zip codes. I'll give you two of them, 63136 and 63114. But there's some others. Find out what the hottest zip codes are, where the most cash transactions are going on in your town, and then you know the drive for dollars in that area because then you know you got a deal you can move because they're moving deals over there. Okay. and I just, That's why I, I'm glad our office is in 63114 so we can get deals right here based off our Google Map location. <laughs> Six three one one four, and I just look on Zillow, right, and see where the dots are. No, there's an actual video that you can look up. Uh, I can send it to you. So it's a it's a buyer's list hack. You can see I, I can send it to you. Okay. Um, I think it's on my playlist. I don't know. I think it is on the playlist on the woke real estate playlist on YouTube. But I, I I'll send it to you. Okay. It should be in my uh, thing though. But uh, there's a way there's a way you can go on like list source on one of those sites and actually pull and see where the most cash transactions are happening at. Okay. All right. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yep. See, I want to sprinkle some jewels on you. Any more questions for me? No, sir. Not at this moment. All right. Knock them dead and keep stay, get on that phone some kind of way. I don't want to hear no excuse. Yeah, I don't no. care if it's a baby in the background. Yeah, I got kids, but we buy I'm sorry. This is what we do. Right. They crying and making noise and playing games. Yeah, I still want to buy your house. Right. Because that's exactly how I be. They be like, Mommy. Yep. Yeah. Look, see. We're looking to buy some more houses. I'm sorry, but uh, the baby's in the background. Still got to get this deal done. Right. Okay. Look, and that you know. might help you build rapport. They see you a real person. Be yourself. That's another thing. I'm always myself. I never try to be somebody I'm not. I am who I am. Most people that see me on the internet meet me in person say, you're the same person because I am who I am. I don't have to fake it or do anything different than what I am, who I am. Be yourself. And people are going to gravitate to you anyway. Okay. All right. All right. Have a good one. You too. All right. Thank you. you too. You're welcome. Bye bye. So that's how we do it, yo. If this video provided you any type of value, give it a like, give it a share, give it a thumbs up, share it out if you care. Alliance World, what up? What up? What up? Did you all have any questions, comments, or concerns? That's in the comments here. What else we got on here? Go live with Natasha. Oh, wait a minute. There were some people requesting lives. What's going on on here? I don't even know how to do all that. Uh, I'm pushing too many buttons. I'm going to mess up the whole stream now. Uh, messing up the whole stream. Yep, so any questions, comments, concerns before I get up out here and do some more woke stuff? Like I said, we're going live the next few weeks in a row. Monday night, 7 o'clock Central Time, 8 o'clock Eastern. Make sure you're tuned in. We're going to be coming on with uh, next week talking about a deal analysis. The week after that, we'll be talking to um, Mr. Q Quentin Flores, a uh, real estate monster here on Instagram. And we'll be going on with uh, who else? Uh, real estate old school as well. Let me see. Somebody else said did something. It pops up on this screen here. So, other than that, any more questions? Nope. So, like I said, follow me on all social media outlets at Chris Monroe STL. That's Snapchat, that's Twitter, that's Instagram, that's Facebook, that's YouTube. Don't forget the YouTube with over 100 free real estate training videos to teach you how to change your life and buy some houses. So, do what you do. Be who you be. And I'll see you before you see me.